You are watching a clip from the John Perry channel, Genetics and Evolution. This conversation has been wonderful, Richard. I, I want to try and wrap things up by hopefully talking about the ending of your book, The River Out of Eden, where you talk about this concept of an information bomb. What is this information okay. bomb? Well, um, in the last chapter of River Out of Eden, um, I had this rather sort of science fiction-y flavored chapter, the information bomb, the replication bomb. And I began with the, the, the analogy with a supernova. Uh, if you look out into the heavens, uh, once every century or so, you may see a supernova, a great flare up of um, extreme energy in some part of the solar system. Well. The information bomb is another kind of flare up. It's, mm -hmm. it's not um, visible as a flash of light. Uh, it doesn't become visible until later, but what it is, is the rare discovery, probably rare discovery of replication. On our planet, it happened when the origin of life happened and when RNA, probably RNA and then DNA, anyway, DNA eventually produced um, life. And so you've got a, a, a great, flowering, an explosion mm. of living things, um, which culminated in humanity, which is capable of actually leaving the home planet, first in the form of radio waves, uh, which have already left the planet, of course, and it could be picked up in this expanding shell, expanding sphere of influence. And then finally, in the form of spaceships, rockets, which can go elsewhere in the universe. Um, so this is like a kind of supernova, it takes longer to develop, but it is a kind of bomb. It's a kind of explosion. It, it has a quieter beginning, uh, but it could have a very momentous ending if, um, as science fiction writers speculate, we do spread to other parts of the cosmos. <laughs> so that's the replication bomb or the information bomb. It starts with the spontaneous arising on a planet somewhere in the universe of self-replication. Self-replication then sets in motion a chain reaction, which is life, natural selection, Darwinian natural selection, no doubt in different forms in different, different planets. But the result is an explosion of life, which culminates in a form of life, which is capable of intelligence and capable of, techno capable of technology and is capable of reaching out beyond the home planet, uh, rather like a supernova. I loved that part of this book. It just, I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with the pale blue dot, Carl Sagan's uh, yes. poem, you know, where he, he talks about the, the humble earth and how it, it just it's just a poem about humility. And I was when I was reading this, your information bomb, I, I, I realized it's actually possible that this humble pale blue dot could consume the galaxy. I mean, we could actually send out <laughs> we could actually send out uh, bits of information that first emerged here that go everywhere. Actually traveling to, 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 is, is, is a, a, stiff, a stiffer proposition. Carl Sagan himself speculated, other science fiction writers have speculated yeah. that this could happen. Um, that's much more difficult than broadcasting radio waves, which we're already right. doing and, and could increase the intensity of those. Yes, it's a, it's a nice science fiction concept. So that was just a clip from my conversation with Richard Dawkins. You can see the whole thing. There's a link to that down below. Subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed it. I upload clips pretty regularly, talks and conversations and presentations that I've done on genetics and evolution, and I am gearing up to start doing weekly videos again here that are completely new, completely fresh.